Hello everybody and Happy New Year's Eve. Now depending where you live, it's going to be closer to New Year's Day than in other places. Here, we're just a couple hours into New Year's Eve, but in some places, and you know where your places are, you're a whole bunch closer. I don't think I'm going to make it all the way to actual New Year's Day in where you guys live, but we'll try and come close. We'll see what happens. And I'm going to go with some Irkin brand right here. wanted to see if I couldn't throw a freehand design on his cloak and here's a little uh, maybe this could be fun right here. See if we can't get that design on his cloak. That could be something fun. Hey there Trevor, how's it going? Yeah, it's well, geez. In some places it's not even New Year's Eve yet. Yeah. This is just a very simple bark and branch base here. A little bit like well, this one's this is a cork here. But a couple things I wanted to show you on this. So this is part of my, I think it was Series 9 for my Army Painting Series, Rohan. See what we did on the shield right there? Well, we're going to try and do that. See if we can't get some of that on his shield right here. Instead of just making this white, which you see all the time, first and last is just about first. Yeah, I, I figured, well, it was either going to be tonight or tomorrow. And I thought, well, what the heck, let's just do this thing tonight and have some fun here. So I'm just going to make my window bigger so I can see what the heck I'm doing. We're also going to try and focus a little more on GW paints just for, well, you folks, it's hard to get the Reaper paints. So we've got our contrast paints out here. There's going to be some Leviathan blue, some Wildwood. I think we got those over here. Boom. Now, this is something we haven't used in a while. I actually got to replace this. It's mostly gone. This is the Warp Lightning because we want to get some of our nifty little Rohan green. And I throw out some other colors here. We got Flash Gets Yellow. I think that's Screaming Skull there. That's oh, Rhinox Hide. What's the green one here? That's Lauren Forest. We'll just we'll play around with some minimal colors here, see what we can do with that. Now, the last Lord of the Rings figures I did it was a color test for my Doe Amroth. And I had found this really nifty freehand. As, I think it was part of the computer game or something like that. Or the Lord of the Rings Online. And that was really nifty. And that's something I'm going to do on a lot of my a lot of my Doe Amroth. But I wanted to see, could I find something fun? Some kind of freehand to do on these cloaks. We're definitely going to do the Red Shield. We need to have an Urkin brand here leading the army. So let's just get right down to it. Now, the other thing is we're going to be using some of this foliage right here. See that purple and green together there? Oh, hey, Hunter, how's it going? Yep, it's got to be, well, let's see. You guys are only about six hours ahead of us. So there's your purple flowers right there. I know in, in Melbourne, I believe they are 13 hours ahead of us, something like that. Let's get in here. There's some of our Leviathan blue. There's some of our wildwood. And there is your Fire Slayer flesh. Mixing the Fire Slayer and the Leviathan together, that makes it real interesting. Now we're going to just get right into this. I'm just going to get right down into this. And let's see, I think I've got, oh my gosh, at least 15 or more, maybe closer to 16, Rohan Cav that are all prepped and, I don't know, something tells me that it would be fun to have them be the red shields of Urken Brand, so I, for gameplay that's not too bad either. Hey Waleed, how's it going? Ah, you snuck in here too. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen some of the, oh, did you see that flag? That, I <laughs> That, that flag that's down in the lower right-hand corner, you, you saw that picture that I sent, right? Yeah, on Amazon, you can get, well, at least Rohan and Gondor flags. Five foot by three foot, granted, they're, they're nylon prints. I mean, they're not sewn or anything like that or whatever, but hey, for, was it, 12, 13 bucks, you just can't beat that. That's none too shabby. All right, so we're just, again, mixing these. Mixing these up, we also have a little bit of the the uh, contrast medium out here too that we're gonna play with. Oh boy, 
I swear I'm going to get going with my Greek at some point. If I could just hit Google Translate right now, I'd try and find a hello and, well, happy new year. Well, actually, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, happy new year in Greek. I wish I could do that, but that is, that is beyond my abilities, unfortunately, at this point here. That is not something I can do. I swear one of these days I'm going to have a cheat sheet of greetings and, well... German, Korean, oh, definitely Greek for sure. Because actually, I think you've been you've been waiting for a greeting for me a few times, and I've kind of been not quite on the ball there to be able to deliver greetings in other languages. So I apologize for that. I mean, this this is essentially an international stream here because, well, the hour that it is here and the hour that it is there. So at some point, I promise I'll make good on that. So I just did the Leviathan blue there, but now we're going to shift. Now we're going to shift, and we're going to actually go allow some of that Fire Slayer flash to work its way in. Part of it is we're getting closer to the ground here, so we want to get some, some brown ground colors in there. Now I'm looking forward to, let's see... I have a bunch of the fiefdoms figures. Those are ready to go. Now let's just throw this right over this shield. And it's going to be... What the heck? I have the contrast medium. I should use that. So I just took some of the glaze down here a little bit. And we'll do a red over the top of this. But for now, we just wanted to get some of the lighter areas shaded there. What the heck color is the tassel? That shows it as white also. I don't know if I'll make it that color, but we'll just, I'm going to use as much as I can the reference that's in the lower left-hand corner as far as the colors on him go. So back to a little more of the Fire Slayer. Yeah, a little more even here because he got some of the face going. Looks like he has a beard working. So yeah, I think that, that, Rohan flag should, in a pinch, make a fun background. Oh, it's Russian. My apologies. I thought I saw... S oh, now I'm seeing the Cyrillic. Sorry. I, I can only see things out of the corner of my eye, so I apologize. Well, actually, I'm, I need to find Russian, Polish. I need to find that, too, because I know there's been occasions where... Folks have dropped in, and here, let's let's do the interior of this cloak. So what I just did here, grabbed a little bit of this. We're going to mix it with some of our contrast there. And that's the start of our white interior there. How's that? Now, the, the thing when I'm doing this kind of stuff, and I realize that for most folks, this is this big old messy thing that's going on, and they say, oh my gosh, what is happening here? And it, it's tough for them to quite deal with the fact that we are not doing gentle little layers and starting with something that was primed black. We started with something that was basically primed about like this, which your Badger Steinal Res. Seems like we have two more evil players joining our group. It's going to be Rohan and Fiefdoms. Well, that's, hey, that's always good. Now the, let's see, what was the, oh, the Dunlendings, right? That's, that's going to be my other one there. And, well, Harad too. So we got, we got a whole bunch of stuff that's coming, baby. We're going to go Leviathan Blue here for a little. Yeah, I'm, phew. Of course, the Easterlings, those are the guys that are painted right now, but I'll try and at least have the... Well, I think the f quickest way is to do part Rohan and part Dal Amroth, at least in the beginning. Essentially, these... I've got one list, I don't know, six, seven hundred points, that does include just this plain old Rohan infantry to fill it out. So, now I'm going to look at some of these other guys here. So you can see the cloak here is less of that blue, bluish green. It's more of a forest green. 
I think I might just stick with that. We'll see. And like I said, that would be my Harad. That's these guys right here. Yeah, very fun. Love the sand on the base. And Antoine said, good morning. I can't read the rest. Well, good morning, too. Well, let's see now. Hmm, how much further ahead are you in Russia? Well, <laughs> it can depend. I'm sure Russia has way more time zones than even we do. So as I'm taking that warp lightning green, we are mixing it with a little leviathan blue here to darken it down. And we're just going to go uh, like so. Right in there. Up and under this fold here. I might even go a uh, touch of wild wood in there too as we work our way down. You can see I'm just working with the folds here of the cloak. Working with those folds and any other bit of this we're looking for a green. Oh, hey, Matt. How's it going? It, it's, it, it happens fast, doesn't it? Uh, that, that's the whole point of this is you just start developing things fast. That's so we're going to take some more of the Screaming Skull here. And while it is even still wet here, we're going to strike back into this. Oh, well, it has, what is the foliage that I'm using for the base? So, what are we looking at here? This was the, see that there's purple and a couple of different colors of green. I also have, this is also from Warlord here. See, we got some yellow flowers here. I thought that could be a nice little compliment there. And I also have, this is from Woodland Scenics. Just in case, we got some tree here. Now, on his base, I think it's a little bit too small, but we may utilize that because we have other Orkin brand here. We got him on horseback. We'll try We'll try all of them. Now, what I will do is I'll let some of this dry just a bit here. And I'll show you. Actually, here is another army painting series. So, yet another one of my evil armies here. We got... Our Morgul Knights, these were actually all done in oils, so we'll be doing some more of those. And this is actually my first army painting series for Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Walid, he recognizes these guys, my Easterlings, that I love so much. Oh, and my Army of the Dead, which I keep filling out. Walid also has his Army of the Dead going. So it will probably be, well, I probably have to draw lots. Oh, Mackie says you have to be brave in painting. Oh, well, thank you very much. I I try to make it just less scary because so many people, they're just, they convince themselves they can't do it. They just, oh, no, I, I can't do that. And it really is possible. It is. It definitely is. So I'm doing, now, just going back over again here. So I took the Leviathan Blue, mixed that up. We were practically into palette sludge already, my favorite color. And the palette, for those not quite familiar with it, it's just a Chinese food container. Uh, they were, today's Monday, yeah, they were closed today. They're closed on Mondays because I would have gotten that mushu pork that we talked about in the last live session. Because this, once you get something like that in your head, it kind of stays there. Let's say we're, we're changing this again. Okay, we got the oh, that Talarn Flash, something like that. We're going to mix it with the Leviathan. Go with that. Put some of that on the base here. <laughs> well, Leed says nobody else likes those Easterlings. Well, we know on pretty solid confirmation that Gondor doesn't like the Easterlings. Not, not ever. Well... The Dragon Knight is going to be having Aragorn's head on a stick. It's kind of like bacon on a stick or a corn dog on a stick. Yes, indeed. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. I, I got three. Uh, they're sitting around here somewhere. The three new ones, which Walid is, and I know he's been painting those. The heralds and well, I guess he's not the king of the dead. 
but it's the there's definitely the two heralds with the banners. I'm looking forward to doing those, but trying this. So this is the golden acrylics, fluorescent green, and apparently, I hope it's still on sale. But you can get that stuff in fluorescent blue. So we gotta get that. All right, let's go. Let's go back into here. I'm gonna take advantage of this while it's still wet. We don't always do that. But hey, for cloaks, when you got these long sweeping strokes like this, is it a bad idea? Not really. Not really. Here, let's bring out a little bit of our horsies here. Now, I did throw out some somewhere as fleshed here as red in one of those little containers that you see. A little bit of flesh tears in there. Now, we are going to do on the shield sort of what we did with the cloak speaking of the cloak we gotta so i have this whole color here that i can use it's it's semi-translucent it's the same thing that i do with the reaper clears and liner paints all the time it's the other reason why i like the big old brush like this look at that nice filbert check this out i mean it's, it's a little bit like we're oil painting here almost because some of that paint is still wet Let's scumble this right in. Here, let's take a little touch of our darker glaze, and we'll mix that in. And now we're going to go over here, and we're going to take our lighter color again, and we're going to do something like this because, hey, wet into wet. Now, what else do I have? Well, let's see. There's Saruman and Gandalf, the white. I've got those... I still have to put together this Saruman, but I've got Gandalf ready to go on Shadowfax and on foot. We're going to do essentially a how to paint white. I just, this reminded me of it as we're working on this right here. We're painting white. And you can see there's no paint it white and take the Nuln Oil or I almost said sepia liner or snake bite leather which is basically kind of the same thing so this is one that we did a few weeks ago painting black right so you can check that one out that's just another one of the live sessions i'm going to move some of these guys out of harm's way and as you can see i can just keep right on going a lot of this there's still those original glazes that are still wet and that's great because I can go back in here take some of those again see how we just smoothed out that little line that wanted to get going there now I need another blue I'm looking for something that's a little bit more of a sky blue color here oh what the heck what is this oh well Keldor sky how's that here I don't know if I've actually used this one yet <clears throat> but that should suffice to do what I need it to do. Again, this is basically our white. Oh, look at this. We're basically making mint green. And most of those that are familiar with these live sessions, they knew what mint green is. It's not real edible, but it's a really nifty metal color. No doubt about that. So we're going to go back into our See that grabs some of my contrast paint there and we're starting to get a little little bit of our light to dark fade here. Poof, we'll be working more on that later too. Underside gonna be slightly different here. We'll get some of our flash tone mixed with our sky blue. I'm gonna have to turn this upside down here. It's not gonna look super neat as I do that but it's gonna let me get the job done now we're gonna take some of this flesh fire slayer flesh not flesh tear red speaking of which what the heck let's grab some of that flesh tear red touch of this green over here see how that darkens it deepens it a bit 
And now onto our shield here. I know this is a really different way of using the contrast paints. I've got wow, uh, actually now dozens of tutorials on different ways of utilizing this and they're mostly, well they're all totally different than the whole GW slop it on kind of stuff. And you say, well okay, what's the deal with that? Well, what's the deal with that? Is that I first got my jar, was it June 15th, right? It was the first time I used them. I've been using them a lot in different videos for various reasons. And there are some of the original jars that I'm still using. So that's that kind of says something right there, if you can make it last that much longer. So let's see if we can't do a white head crest here. And you can see it's going to start up virtually almost gray. It's even going to pick up a little bit of the green, which is fine because, hey, it would either reflect onto that white or even show through a little bit. Let's get some gold-ish colors onto that helmet. So I just took that. I'm going to look to see which one that was. Could have been this one right here. Baylor Brown. I think I've got Flash Get Yellow out there too. Yep, so I'm going to work this in and then we're going to hit this with some some more glazes too. I'm going to look at the... Well, it's showing that as basically being some sort of a chrome type color, but we'll do these more in some kind of a gold here, the sword hilt. And then of course the all-important horn. Gotta remember the horn. Is that kind of the whole purpose for him being there? Wouldn't quite be Urken Brand without that. So we are going to take... So I just mixed in some of that sky blue color and a decent chunk of the glazes on the scale mail here. They're dry enough to let me do this. And this is not a dry brush, actually. There's plenty of paint on that brush, as you can see. It's actually kind of on the watery side. You can accomplish a lot with different types of brush strokes. So you can go more of a feathered brush stroke like this. You also have the wider bristles. Much wider than a tiny little brush, for sure. And you can see we can lighten this up a little bit here. And I'm going to, with stuff like this, I sometimes alternate. I'll go back and forth. I'll lighten things up a bit. Do a different color glaze, not so much to darken it down, but to tint it. So let's say I wanted to tint this more of a purplish blue, something like Leviathan blue. Well, that's that's what that would do. Let's say I want to do something more of a sky blue glaze. Eh, well, you go with something like Achillean green, and that's going to give you, yeah, it'll be darker. But it's also going to give you a different color. It's going to give you more of that greenish teal type of deal. I'll say that ten times fast. Whereas the Leviathan blue, it is it is more of a purple. It's more of a Prussian blue. It's essentially my substitute for blue liner. The snakebite leather is my substitute for the sepia liner. Actually, the was it the shyish purple that is actually a decent substitute for red liner. Hey Juan, how's it going? Oh, well, that you are also much closer to New Year's Day than we are here. You must be five or six hours ahead of us. So it must be about eight or nine in the morning there. I'm going to sneak just a touch of that. Just a little bit of that here. Onto this. 
Well, I'm sh well, I'm I'm assuming this is a horse tail right here. Now, of course, he rides a white horse, at least according to that reference. So I'm not quite sure if he if he's ripping the tails off of horses. I've heard of pin the tail on the donkey, but not rip the tail off the horse. Now I can go the opposite way too. I can warm this up a bit. Oh, hey there, Black's cleric. Black, no, Black's. It is Black's cleric. Okay. Hopefully, yeah, I was pretty sure I gave you some warning this was coming. I wasn't sure if it was going to be today or potentially this time tomorrow. But I just figured, well, we may not be getting back from New Year's until this time tomorrow. So better do it now. Better do that now. So I'm going to do the... I'm going to play around with this green here. So you can see I just took some of that lighter color and just slammed right into my green. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just real excited about the, the Lord of the Rings stuff. It's It was my favorite game back in the day. And when I realized it was coming back, I was very excited. And now there's there's a group of us together and... We are playing Lord of the Rings, and I don't know if you heard early on in the stream, but that flag that's in the lower right-hand corner, I was able to find that on Amazon for a extremely reasonable price. So now I have a little, little symbol of the Ritter mark here, the Horse Lords. Actually, when Kathy saw it, she liked it so much. She said, "Oh man, we've got to, uh, we have to get a whole new flagpole, so that we can, because the well, obviously the American flag is attached to one. The Chicago flag never gets, never goes outside. It remains permanently flying indoors. And yes, Chicago has its own city flag. The other thing too with with this green here is I don't want to get too involved with this." Oh, one says it's 9.45. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I hope you have a great 2020. Well, for sure, there will be lots of... There will be a lot of these in 2020. Because I just... I've learned so much about how to do these things. It, it's one thing to try and do them. It's another thing to actually do them. So I'm taking some of that Rhinox hide. A little bit of the... Levite and blue here. I'm gonna do that on the sleeve here. I think that is a sleeve color that I used quite frequently on the the regular Rohan infantry here. Let's sneak that. So you can see we just just keep hammering away with this bigger brush here. No fuss, no moss. So let's get some of these. Just added a little bit of, and I'm gonna look up the name of that flesh tone color there, because I'm mixing that right now. Well, let's put a little bit of that on the, on the flip side of this shield here. After, oh my gosh, it must have been a, a well over a week of 55 and 60 degree temperatures. It's finally back to a more normal temperature it well sort of snowed today i'm guessing there's some parts of the world where it's a whole lot colder and i know for sure in some parts it's a whole lot warmer like in australia where there's that hundred some odd degree heat and fires all over the place so i um, hope that folks who are listening to this that the whole fire thing is not affecting you too much. So I am going to just throw a quick little glaze over the the metal pommel right there. I'll just call it a pommel. Why not? Now I'm going to use some of my Fire Slayer Flesh. Go and mix a little bit of the yellow in that. Get rid of some of the excess here, and it's just 
throw in a few glazes here because why not we can do that then I'm gonna go a bit more I'm gonna assume that's his hair and over here beard we'll get into the skin tone later we will continue working with our big old brush here. Oh, it's 8.45 in the UK. Oh, I was trying to... Yeah, I, I know I threw a bunch at you because, well, as Trevor was kind enough to count up, well, actually now, with this session, I would say we officially go over 250, no, 260 hours of tutorial videos between this and the Patreon page. Yeah. That is, that's the Army Painter Pledge level. Well, let's see. We are almost done with Series 15. We're two episodes in on Series 16. 17 and 18 are going to basically sort of start simultaneously. Uh, perhaps 17, 18, and 19. Because I've got... Oh, what are they? The Asiarchs. I've got some of those prepped. I've got Sisters prepped. Obviously, Knights of Dol Amroth. That's going to be another series. There's going to be... <laughs> There's going to be a bunch of different series, no doubt about that. Now, let's go... I'm going to go back into this a little bit and... throw a few lighter tones on this horn. There's even a little bit of green that got mixed up in there. No problem. We like it. Now, I'm going to look at his helmet real quick. I'm going to do something... F I'm going to try this here, actually. I always like to go almost two-tone on the helmet. So some parts, you know, more of a, maybe not just necessarily gold, but something more like a brass or bronze. So we'll just do that. We'll sneak some of this in here. Yeah, that'll act as a nice little contrast and that's just that Caldor sky which is effectively taking the place of stuff like the mint green and the maggot white there we go we're also gonna slab some of that onto here too this this whole notion here and and now well people that have watched the videos long enough they know that the initial phase is it gets kind of messy because you're working fast. All you're trying to do is figure out your color scheme. You're also trying to figure out how long it's going to take, so you're doing some assessment at the same time. Let's do a little warm tone as some reflected light there. So now that we've got this pretty well established here, let's see if we can mess around with Mess around with some sort of a freehand design here on the back. And you do this as early as possible because what happens is people get freaked out. They get real worried. They say, oh, I spent all this time painting this. I don't want it to get destroyed or whatever. I don't want to ruin it. I hear that all the time. Well, if you do it early enough and it doesn't work out, well, you're fine because you just paint right over it. So let's fool around here. We got to see just how big do we make this thing. Let's say at the top point is up there. Let's say the bottom point is going to go all the way down here, which means this point not going to be there. Central point here. Now this is the tricky part because you've got these undulations here in the cloak. Like that. And we've got 
to figure out how big this circle is going to be. And I'm going to say probably about... It's about halfway to where those points are. So let's do that. This is just like what we did with those swans. We putzed around and got all of our stuff established. And then we said, all right, let's get in here with this freehand now. So we got a nice big old bullseye on his back. We need sort of a double ring here. We'll do that. But you notice how the this color is not not super light. It's not super dark. It's in the middle. That's why you'll hear me say the words middle tone a lot. Always using middle tones here because you don't want your freehand to overpower absolutely everything else. And I could use the contrast or that medium or whatever to also tone this down. Now we got to do some it's again it's making it look even more and more like a bullseye but we'll, we'll keep going here and then there's another one over here and then this is where it gets to be a little bit less like a bullseye as we do these and there's three of these on each facing another one here and the reason why this is sort of on the subdued side and just very rough is we're just playing around with it we want to see where we how big do we want this to be because if I didn't like the size of this oh let's see oh that free end just terrifies me we're sort of trembling at the thought of doing that ah well good luck Wally hopefully we'll be seeing you soon and well, I guess we won't be in the, the new digs for a little while yet and the gigantic table with the projected Oh yeah, you gotta have like projected deployment lines and stuff. That's what we're expecting. That is the new standard now for battle reports. But happy new year, and I'll catch you probably next week sometime. So yeah, the whole idea is here: do this freehand sooner rather than later. You find out if you like it or if you don't like it. I find out: do I need to tone this down? And what we can do is something like this. Let's take hmm, some of the wildwood here. Maybe a pinch of green. A little Leviathan blue here. And now, boom. <clears throat> We're just going to drop a little bit of shading here. Knocks that down because... You can't just have the design on the back, right? There's got to be gonna be some kind of shading there, otherwise it's gonna look kind of suspended in midair. Now what we're gonna do here? I'm gonna look and see. I don't have the brightness turned up too much. I'm gonna let's see. I'm gonna let that let that dry a little bit. We're gonna hit some of this over here. Gonna get a hint of a horizon line here. Little hint of horizon line there. Maybe even here too. Sort of a little bit of cheaty sky earth non metallic. That shouldn't be a lot of it there, but let's do a little bit and while while we're messing around with glazes, remember we talked about how we can tint this, so we are gonna go into here. with some of the green and levite and blue mix and you see now that's gonna doesn't just make it darker it gives it an actual color because what we're gonna do over here is take levite and blue and some of that I almost called it mint green it's the mint green substitute we'll throw some of that here and then back over to now this actually has some of the brown in it Oh, I keep forgetting that I've got contrast medium out here, so I'm, I'm going to use some of that. Nope, got to get back to the chat here, make this bigger. 
Oh, hey, James, how's it going? Well, happy New Year. Well, New Year's Eve, at least, because pretty much everywhere it's still New Year's Eve. But we're, we are got to be hurtling towards New Year's Day pretty fast in Australia. I will I will cheat here, and I'm going to say that it is 8.01 in Melbourne, so just four hours away. Only four hours away, and well, we're, we're going to be doing it at least for a little while longer. I'd like to get to stuff like the, the flowers and vegetation, too. But right now, all of this really focuses in. We're really trying to lock in on our values. All right, that now has dried for a spell. Uh, it's 5 p.m. there, and Lee so, oh, Logistics says that it's 10 p.m. there. Wow, that's that's pretty darn close now. Yeah, we have to head off to a friend's house where we traditionally go for New Year's Eve. I think we've been doing that for quite a while, at least, I want to say, close to 15 years. Eh, maybe, maybe 13, 14, something like that. And you can tell now, see, um, because I've got the design, just uh, Perth, uh, Western Australia, well, let's see, now wasn't it, I heard it was like 106 degrees out there in, in Perth. That would be, that would be pretty nuts trying to play some footy in that temperature, holy smokes. You'd need more than... 22 guys on the roster, that's for sure, to survive that. Yeah, once I started hearing about those temperatures, that's when I realized, aha, uh -huh, so that's why. <laughs> the game is played in the, well, in the spring, I suppose. Now, this inner ring, I gotta be a little more judicious on that. Can't go too light with that because it's technically it's supposed to be in the shadows however let's say I accidentally <clears throat> go too <clears throat> too light with it no big deal because I'll just do another glaze over the top like I did before and just like we did with I'll bring this back up here with the swan design on this I'm just going to work this finer and finer. Now, I can't quite tell. It just looks like there's a little ball inside there, so we'll just do, well, a little ball inside there. That's what it shows. We'll stick with that. I try never to outline the designs because then it just starts to stand out a little bit too much. So let's... Let's grab something like this here, see what, what else we can do. Now, I do have my golds here. I think that's flash get yellow. What's interesting is there's actually a texture to this, so it's not like a line. There's actually a bit of texture, so I'm going to see if I can't sort of stipple some of that in. Instead of it necessarily being just painted in neat little blended lines. And it's got a little bit of water there to help this flow. It is a little inconvenient where that major fold is falling spot right in the center of the design. That's that's pretty much inevitable. Almost every design. I mean, it happened with the the swans too. If you if you can, I'll bring that back so you can see that. But it happened there as well. It's just kind of an inevitable thing. 
when you're doing the freehand designs on cloaks things like shield it's a little bit easier but of course all of the Rohan shields already have that design pretty well sculpted in there it's tough to you have to sand it off and is it really worth going through all that I mean I could just make my own shields I think I did that for somehow Theoden, I think it was on horse, his shield went missing, so I didn't, oh, it was, it was Aomir, that's right. There's one that they need to redo. But I've got multiple Theodens. I've got the, the new plastic Theoden. I have the old metal one. I've got Aowen over here on horseback and on foot, so this will probably be another live session right here. I'm just gonna put that aside, get that out of the way. Now there's another area here. Oh hey there, how's it going? Hey, Aerox Aerox Minis. Well uh gee whiz yeah speaking of New Year it's gotta be pretty close for you there too. So greetings to Taiwan. It's much appreciated. Uh, I, I appreciate the company here. I'm just trying to have some some fun with my painting my Lord of the Rings stuff here. Uh, there's so many things I'm looking forward to. Like I said, the Ossiarchs. But I've also got, oh, what have we got? Uh, the Aeronautica planes that we're starting to play around with here. And those Optilung oils, I'll show you those too. That's what I'll be using on the Doe Amroth Knights for the Patreon series. And you notice I haven't gone any later. So I can even take this. I can mix this with my yellow and step that up one level lighter even. One more level up. Especially in places where, yeah, like right here on the apex of this fold. Well, then we we can go the other way too. We can maybe shade things darker if we need to. So while I still have, I'm still working with the golds here, so it's going well. A little rainy, but not cold. Yeah, heat wells. Well, yeah, here it was raining for a couple of days. That just, uh, I, winter rain, well, I don't like summer or spring rain either, but winter rain is always kind of a, ugh. It makes it extra just, because it's not exactly a summer shower. You're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 degrees, 40 degrees, and rain. That's That's never too much fun. Here, let's get a little bit of, Reflected light on this part of his helmet here. And this is what we emphasize in all of those, in all the army painting series, is just maximizing that time because none of us has unlimited time for miniature painting. We wish we did. We really wish we did. But I think I just saw a little discussion somewhere in a Facebook group about someone just had their, a new family member and all of a sudden that new family member, well, they, they tend to demand a whole lot of your attention and time. And that made it really tough for him to work on his commission stuff. So I am not the only person. And if you're, well, let's say you want to paint your armies, well, how many hours a day do you really get to paint? If you're lucky, yeah, I I do this. Oh, geez, for starters, 16 hours a day, sometimes 20. So I I got me all day. I can paint. I can paint all the time. You guys, not so much, and that's why I try to impart at least some of these, this way of just doing things. 
It's not speed painting. I, I really don't like that term at all because it has that whole negative connotation that, well, it's just, it's not very good. Well, I, that there is no such thing that says something that hasn't been painted very slowly can't be good. That is most definitely not the case. I'm just not quite sure how that that all happened. It doesn't have to take forever. Otherwise, well, how the heck are you ever going to have a painted army? And yes, I played with my miniatures. I took them to tournaments, did all that kind of stuff. Now, freehand-wise here wanted to do something a little bit more with the shield. Uh, it's 14 degrees Celsius here. Mm, 14 degrees, that's got to be somewhere in the mid-50s, 52-ish, something like that, Fahrenheit. Because, well, geez, in Perth it's got to be 42 or 43. If it's a hundred and some odd degrees. Oh, hey, John. Well, we do have, we do have uh, someone from Greece. And I was saying earlier that I, I need to learn greetings in a bunch of different languages. Not really my specialty. So what we want to do, where'd you go? We're looking to do, see that little, that is just flat right there. There's no actual texture there we just painted that in and we're gonna see if we can't do that here on this shield so I'm just taking some of my this is some some of the contrast here mixed up and we're just gonna do something like this let's walk our way all the way up here we're gonna do the same thing here And I'm going to go the opposite way, I believe. Yeah, let's do the opposite over here. I probably should have these interlocking as opposed to meeting here, but just bear with me. We'll see what's going on. See, we're trying to get basically established almost like a little bit of a looping pattern, but we got to get the darks in there first. And that's what we're doing now. Just trying to establish some of the darks here. Alright, I think that'll work. So we do that. Now we go back around. And we're going to grab some of the lighter tone here. And see how we turn that into a curve there? Sort of like what we did here. Let's get this guy. It's easier to see that. So it's like a little bit of a loop there. It's, it's crossing over. So that's going to cross over there and go under. Over and under. And what we do is we just establish this with the lighter coat and then we go back over it with the darker color. It's a little bit like what we did with the freehand. Uh, ni hao? Ni, ni hao for hello and daja. Daja hao for hello everybody. Daja hao. Okay, well Kathy's been learning Dutch. Actually, well not just on her stream, but she actually, while she's been exercising, she has been playing one of those Dutch language programs. I guess I need to do that too, but thanks for the, oh, is that the phonetic spelling of it there? So that even an incompetent like me can say it. That is ni hao, ni hao, okay. That I can remember. So actually, yeah, if anybody ever wants to do a phonetic greeting like that, I will try to pronounce it as best as I can. Now that that is here, let's work our magic here on these 
corners and that'll make it look like oh I want to get some more shading up here on these heads too don't want it to just be white I want it to be more than that speaking of which we're gonna go back to our mix here lighten this up yeah that needed to be lighter not bad get tones right in your golden yeah that's well I, I took years and years of French in high school and I could read it and I could write it but speaking it was just Oof, that was disastrous. I had no problems at all in reading and writing, but <laughs> speaking it was a problem. I would just forget, I would just forget words and phrases, to how to say them. <laughs> so see there? don't have to worry I'm just gonna wipe that away now there it seems like there is another yeah there's another line here that we're gonna do let's do the mains here get a little bit lighter on those now let's do some of our red so we hit we'll we're gonna go back into this later on right here but for now we are going to take hmm, some of that and we're mixing it with the flesh tear red you see how it makes sort of a semi opaque lighter red but it's not a red that's overpowering you don't want them you run the risk when you got that sort of Kelly green you got a bright red and you got white he's gonna look like one of Santa's elves and we don't necessarily want Santa's elves uh, I think they're very much north of what you might call it uh, they're Rivendell yeah Santa's Santa's elves are definitely the northern elves maybe they must have mixed with hobbits or something because they seem to be short Yeah, and that 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 happens when I get to this late, and I've been doing this much work during the day. You are gonna get stuff like that. Now let's reflect a little bit of this red over here. We've been fooling around with this red on the shield. Let's get some of this red onto the helmet. So Mandarin is totally the opposite for me. Typing is no problem, but writing. Yeah, you know I. There was one point here where I did a a little I went to a seminar in how to do the I think it was was it Chinese I think it was Chinese alphabet with the those uh, really wild brushes those were fun actually I think I wouldn't even mind using some of those for miniature painting I know that horrifies people too just the thought of that I'm just trying to get myself at not quite sure if it's wood on the other side of that or maybe something more like bronze, but now I'm gonna take see what happens a little bit of yellow here. So you notice I didn't need any red paint basically. I just went at this entirely with that flesh tier red and just lightened it with opaque colors. It did the job. Now, actually, the picture I'm looking at, that shows sort of a, I don't know, I'm going to metal outline around this, so we're just going to hit this real quick here then. We'll just hit that real quick. It's a, it's a change that we're going to make. No big deal. We can do those quickly. And this is... The whole reason why I do the, the shaded base coat stuff is because I find something like this and I go, oh, okay, I need to change that real quick. 
Haven't spent that much time on the shield whatsoever, so making a little bit of a change, not a problem. That does actually... I was worried that it would compete too much with all of the stuff that we've done on here, but it really actually doesn't, so that's good. Let's get this bottom line here. I'm going to tone that down a touch here, but also get some of the blue in there if it's supposed to be more of a metal type color. And while I've got that, you also notice that I don't linger in one area too long. We're constantly moving around, and we're going to move around again. And we're going to mess around with this sword blade here. Now, with something like this, there's a point where I will actually break out the white as I make the air quotes that I cannot make while my hands are full. But there will come a point where white actually does come out here. Let's get a little, yeah. It's almost like a like a flesh stone core that I made here for some of these leather bits. But I also want some of that on the sword here. And we're going to put some on the other side. Then we've got our a little bit of levite and blue. We'll even get some of our our sky blue mixed in there with it. Throw a bit of contrast to the other side of that. The other thing I had wondered about was some sort of design because they're just endless white here but first things first we're actually going to take some green here a little more of the green I'm going to mix that in with that flesh tone color oh big chimpo says for me and japanese calligraphy is not my strong suit guess my heh is handwriting in English, not the cleanest. Well, the, one of my, when I was back in the day when I was teaching 2D art, one of my students, they basically said I was a closet calligrapher and they did everything they could to get me to do calligraphy. I think when I was 12 or something like that, 11, 12, I was given a, it's one of those calligraphy set type things. It had those, the markers that had the, kind of nifty shape to them and everything so it would be easier to learn how to do the calligraphy and I enjoyed that that definitely made me a calligraphy fan so here I'm just you can see that the white has some green reflected in it for obvious reasons at least I hope they're obvious reasons and we're going to do that again over here just get a little bit of green into there now at this point let's see if I can so this is white scar white. Is it even viable? Eh, sort of. Just throw some out here just to have it. Get some of that contrast medium in it and thin it down a touch. And let's start to hit a few of these. Oh, Aerox Minis has got to run out for a bit. But if you're done by the time I'm back, well, Happy New Year to you as well. Thanks for joining. And like I said, any little phonetic pronunciation lessons are appreciated. I will try to do my best to remember that. I'm going to have to write that down for sure. <laughs> Either that or someone who's watching now can send me a Facebook message with that in it. And then I'll remember it. 
So now, see, I can even here on my little suggested suggestions of these not work patterns here, I can work those in a little bit more. Yeah, it's just a suggestion. I'm not going to paint every single one in there because, well, part of it is that would look, that's just a little bit too much detail. Yeah, closet calligrapher runs off the tongue quite nice. Yeah, it, I think of, well, when I do the 40K stuff, right, and you're doing purity seals, and of course my army was Inquisition themed, so you can bet that I did that any chance I could and while well, my sisters they are going to be like my old sisters of the raven so it'll actually be kinda of green and go see how this now has some some sparkle on there look at that now let's swing this around we can find a few places like this horn for sure it's supposed to be almost like an ivory right I'm gonna throw a few lighter hints here real quick like along this edge here let's do this edge here and let's see how long have we been working on this Ooh, one hour six minutes and there was absolutely nothing here and this well this is how I'm able to get Army's done and have them look this way. You just have to be willing, and I know I said this a million times on the Lizard Man Army painting series that I'm working on for the Patreon page right now. You, you just sort of have to be willing to not see that instant progress where, let's say, all I had painted was the helmet, and yay, helmet's done. Well, now you got the shield, now you've got the cloak, you've got all this other stuff. You haven't even touched it yet. It's still just primer. Good luck working around that face or the helmet or whatever. Try not to hit that because you haven't even touched a whole bunch of it yet. Whereas here, and there's some parts you could for sure take the, even to a tournament, whatever, just throw this on the table and a, Pretty much everybody in the room, they would just call it done, even without the foliage on it. And that that's another thing, too, is you try and get stuff to a certain area where you can maybe take it off of the little dead pink container like I've got it here. You play your game with it. You bring it back. I mean, that's what I did with my Easterlings twice, because I've had to paint them twice. Oh, let's see. Shin, Shin Yan Kwaya. Kwaila. Catch you later. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm going to... Oh, I need that one. I'm going to just... I need to just start incorporating these into everyday life. That's what I need to do. This this is... Uh, yeah, boy, between... We will be the multilingual household here because Kathy's doing the Dutch. And I guess I will take care of some of the Pacific Rim... She'll take care of the European languages, I guess, and I'll be taking care of the Pacific Rim. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'll have to do greetings in at least five languages each time, including Russian because, well, let's see. Oh, what is Dasvidanya? Is that, that's not Polish. I should know. I should know that for sure. Now I'm going to work in more of this sky blue here. Let's get the edge of this. Oh, James is left to watch later. Happy New Year to you too. And I, like I said, I appreciate everybody that is keeping me company here as I add to my, my Lord of the Rings here. Working on a whole new phase of the the Rohan army. Because essentially, 
back in the day, the, the Rohan army was kind of the, well, masked horsemen, lots of bows, whatever. And I like the idea of something a little more elite-based, some hero-based with that royal guard, right? I guess I still have to find myself things like gambling, not gambling, gambling. And I'll see, oh, who are some of the other... Well, there's Elfhelm also. I gotta find gotta find me an Elfhelm figure too, because I know he. Well, the Warren Rohan book is on its way. In fact, <laughs> what's it now? Was it three thirty one here? Who knows? In the next six hours, it could actually have arrived here. So that could be fun. Looking forward to that. And there's a lot of interesting profiles in there. Now, see, we're just going to go back in with a little bit of dark here in some places. Let's get the... I'm just going to hit the underside of this blade real quick here. I know that's not the most interesting thing to see. We're also going to do this here. So I've got this green. We're going to get some white in there. Because actually, green and purple, and that's sort of what we got there. That actually makes a really nice gray. I know that really freaks people out when they when I tell them that. Let's go back to our cloak here, and we'll get some lighter greens because now we know just how light we can go with that green because if I had continued to highlight with green I would say oh yeah it looks like a nice highlight and then all of a sudden try to put the freehand on there and there would have been no leeway for me absolutely nowhere to go at least as far as lights and darks and speaking of which we are going to maybe just take a touch of that white to liven up our yellow a little bit in a few key areas here yeah let's get some of this But of all the all the while, I have to be super aware of where those folds are, where shadows would fall, and in a pinch, I can always just go back in and clean that up. You also you have a little bit of artistic license because in some ways you're distorting the pattern anyways because it is on a cloak right that's wrapped around him and it's flowing so the pattern is not going to be a perfect circle anyways now, I do have to make that somewhat lighter that was just kind of disappearing completely that didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense and I am going to get that just a bit lighter See if I can't work in some green here. We've gotten lots of warmer tones, a lot of reds here in my gold, so I need to get some green into that too now. Nothing actually makes gold look more like gold, but a touch of green. I know it sounds crazy. even go on the opposite side of that. Let's get a little bit of that green going here and then we're going to try and get some of that onto the scale mail here. Let's lighten up a few areas. I'll try and find a few of these that are just catching some light. We don't want to do it on every single one and certainly not ones that are going to be 
maybe in shadow from the shield. Now this is one of the old metal sculpts here. And as I as I work on these things, it is not like the new the new 3D sculpted ones where stuff like this is essentially a perfect pattern. This is going to be far from it, just the nature of the beast. I can basically see where all of the sculpting tool marks are. Just it's a hazard that you got to live with with these old metal figures. And that, of course, they're old and they've been cast so many times and maybe the mold was already starting to give way a little bit. And now let's get a little bit lighter on some of these ones that are up towards the... by his head here, at least on, on his chest. Have a few of these picking up some more light. Now you notice I didn't do a whole lot on the base because well I wanted to sort of cover that with some foliage. So that's got we got that Rhinox hide. I'm gonna do some some kind of a leather color here. I don't want that to get too light. I'm gonna look back at what we did with our army here. This is what I'm see I've got that sort of brown color there. We're trying to match that. I'm going to grab a little of this here. We'll mix that in. And I see I either need to get some dark there and or some lighter colors on this green. And I think we're going to do both. So I just added some lighter color, but now We've got our darker green still. We'll throw a little bit of that in there too. The red, I am going to take advantage of that. Actually gonna make something that's almost a little bit on the pinkish side here. Looking for a few little accents on the shield that are different than the warmer red that we did. Here, I'm going to get some little touch of reflected red onto that. At a certain point, then it becomes an issue of just refinement. How much more detail do you want in some areas? How much less do you want in others? And that, that will vary. Each person's just going to have to figure that out themselves. So I'm going to knock down my brightness just a touch there. And it makes the shield a little bit easier to see. I need some reflected light that's also more of an earth color here. So sort of a tan gray, like you do. Then I'm going to go back into my lighter white there and strengthen a few of these. Let's see if I can't give him some eyes. I know you can't. It's going to be tough for you guys to see. Just a suggestion there. So I'll throw those in. And then I got the wild wood or something that's darker there. And. We'll back around the outside now and the eyes are just they're set down into the into the helmet I 
we'll get a few more lights. There was my let's throw some more white out here real quick. Here, just give me a little more to play with here. Because I want to get a few, like you see right here, some bright edge things going on on the sword. The shield needed that to be extended a bit. I don't want it that bright all the way around. That's not going to make any sense, but at least about that much. Now let's go back to the what I'm going to assume is a horsetail here. And on some of these upper surfaces here, same thing. Just find some lighter a few lighter strands to bring out. Now the cloak here, I'm gonna get away from the white a little bit and go back to the, what was that, the, not the white scar, that was the screaming skull, that's it. Which, oh gosh, it's been long enough now that I don't remember what the old bone color used to be. Oh my god, the classic bone color that people used to use all the time and then throw known over it known oil over no not uh devlin mud over the top of it to make their their skeletons and stuff that is something we're definitely going to work on with the osiarx is doing skulls bones skeletons but not in the traditional way and some of that might also find its way into some oil painting that's for sure because love me some oils. Now, what I've been wanting to do is see that little that sun design there. I don't think I can sneak that into here, but I can at least maybe. Again, that's the flesh here, red. I'm gonna take some wild wood here. Let's see what kind of a pattern that I can do here. Just going to start out as a line, and it's going to be a parallel line. I'm going to stop it there. Let's try another parallel line here. And that's why I didn't go all the way to say finished on my white, because I wasn't quite sure where I wanted this to be. If I painted all the white stuff there and then put this on there and said, oh, I don't know if I like that, then I'd be repainting much more than just painting over this. Okay, we're almost there. So we'll flip this over like so. And now let's connect connect this to a vertical a bit of vertical stripe action there do the same over here but now this is more open and you see that that sun sort of a thing there let's see if we can't do something like that in the corner ironically enough it's kind of a pattern that I did on my Easterlings. It is not all that dissimilar, which is highly ironic. So let's go with... Do I need one more concentric circle? We'll just go one more. 
And then I'm going to put these here. And I'm going to go a double line here in the middle. And I hope people can see this. I think they can. And then it's almost a bit of an inverted V shape here. Let's see if we can't do these. Sometimes it's just best to start in the middle and then work your way off to the sides like I just did there. Speaking of the middle here, we're going to do something like that. And then we'll do one each over here and over here. Like that. And then there's a couple of these that actually attach right here to my arc. To actually move this over a little bit. And I don't think I'm going to. Yeah, I was attempted actually for a brief second there to sort of fill that with some sort of a yellow color or whatever, gold. And I said, no, that's just going to make it too pronounced. We don't need to do that. And now I can go in here and I'm just going to clean up this pattern, make a few changes to it maybe. I can always go back and when this is, man, I, I didn't go back into this area and do any kind of final highlighting because I, I saw this area and I said, boy, it would be neat if we could do something there in terms of freehand. Wasn't sure what it could be. And this is by no means a white anyways, so I still got more room to maneuver. As soon as you grab that white and you put that out there, it's, well, it's sort of like the genie you can't put back in the bottle. You've, you've taken away the, the lightest things that you can do. And at that point, all you can do is just darken it. But now I've gone, taken a little bit of my white, mixed it with the Screaming Skull. So I'm trying to get it to be a little bit lighter here on this part of our fold. So that it turns and then goes down into the recess there. Let's get a little bit of lighter tone there too because hey that is supposed to be white after all. Again tempted, real tempted to do stuff down in there but I think that's just a just a bad idea. In some ways, you got to leave the viewer's eye a place to rest. It can't just all be a visual frenzy. And here, this is where I'm just going to maybe knock down some of the yellow that's here. But I can also clean that up a bit. So I'm going to take some of my darker green here. So I have to rotate this around where I can see it. I know that makes it sometimes tough for you guys to see. I have one of my original little sketch dots there. Now maybe... No, I was tempted to throw in a little bit of green there, but I'm just going to avoid that temptation. And... 
And this whole freehand was essentially drawn in with contrast paints. And that is usually not how people think of contrast paints. But what do you need for freehand? Well, you need some super thin paint. And you probably don't want it to be super thick either as far as, or opaque, as far as coverage. Those two things kind of describe contrast paints. It's one of those things you use the stuff for things where it's at its strong suit. And we just kind of mentioned the two things that contrast paints does well. So that's why we kind of give it a shot there. So now Urkenbrand, he's got a hefty amount of freehand on him, which is good. It's going to make him stand out because anyone that's played Lord of the Rings, I know <laughs> the, the folks that were watching earlier, some of which that are in my group, uh, they, they can attest to what those scrums are like. Oh, Big Chimpo, Mr. Crash Out, thanks for... Oh, Yes, a multilingual 2020. Oh, and I just, I'm going to scroll up here. Oh, Shin, Shin Yuan Quila. Catch you later. Ha ha. Now I have to remember to say that at the end of this. Holy smokes. So thanks again for keeping me company. Hopefully a multilingual 2020. And, well, I want to do more than, than just have... My my different armies, I want to do terrain also. I really want to do, and I've got the Rohan house from GW. And with the idea is that I take that house, I build that, use its measurements, and then show you how to make that with some much less expensive materials, like leftover pink foam and that sort of stuff. So once again, just trying to clean up a few things of freehand here. Let's get back to my sky color while we're at it here. And give some reflections on this. We've got that kind of on the just the darker side. And we're going to have this white mane or whatever right next to it. There's got to be some kind of color reflected onto that or light reflected onto that. I see I need me some brown over here. That's just a Rhinox hide, I think it is. And we're going to take some of this and mix that with the Rhinox hide to get some hair. Again, at least I believe that is his hair. It's actually a little bit of the, oh, is that Kislev flesh, I think, maybe? Find me a few little highlights in here. If it gets too late, I can always just knock it down with a little bit of a little bit of a glaze. All right, let's see what we can do on the other side of my freehand here. I am putting a little hint of a design there. Let's see if that, I'm going to say that's probably, that's got to get some blue on it here, this little chunk of armor on the back of his hand. This needs to be lighter here and on that side. And now I'm going to try and lighten up the cloak a bit up towards the top here. Yeah, I need to sneak in a little bit of a highlight there. Now I had done on the regular infantry guys, I had done some spatter effects and stuff. I don't think I'm going to do too much of that here. But I am, speaking of reflected things, 
see if I can't reflect some of this white robe here or cloak onto this scale mail. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. And at a certain point then I have to kind of stop doing that because it's too far away from the cloak to catch that reflected light. So I think that helps a lot. Again, going into Yeah, I'm going to say those need a few little hints of that bluish white that I just mixed. Yeah, helmet back there needs. So see how it kind of goes dark and then light, then sort of a middle, and now we'll go back to a lighter color over here. Let's go back to our warmer tone. We'll get some lights on this side of the There we are. So let's see, how close are we? We have to be pretty close here. It is 8.57 in Melbourne, so I'm about three hours away then. No, four hours. Oh, yeah, three hours away from the big change, the new decade and all that. Oh, gee, that's right, new decade. Almost time for that. And his best wishes to everybody that is either just about to celebrate that or, well, like me, at some point when you try and get some sleep whenever I can here. We're going to be doing the New Year's thing there. I have a, a ton of things planned for 2020. Actually, I've got a lot of Mantic, oh, what is that? The, the Kings of War stuff. I've been painting the Marvel Crisis Protocol. For folks that are new to the channel here, I will, if you don't mind, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you'll get notifications if you click on the bell when I do things like this. Because in 2020, this is going to be much more frequent. It's I think just the last couple of months here where I figured out just how to do this on a more regular basis and make it work. Along with all of the oh, engineer to draw and Daniel. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, and Gary is here. Happy New Year. Boy, I'm going to have to... Yes, we've been having lessons in sort of Mandarin type things. We're I think we're going to have to have all kinds of language lessons on here. Because if Kathy's going to be learning her Dutch and stuff, I need to be learning uh, some more languages too. Now I need to get a nice bright seat right there and then another one there. Something there. So how long have we been at this? What, an hour and a half? One hour? Well... Yeah, like an hour and a half, really. I'm going to make sure that we got our focus going there. But we've got, yeah, we've got our free hand. This is something I was really itching to do. I don't think that'll be possible on the horse version of him, just because of the way that's sculpted and such, but... That's why I really wanted to try it on this. Now let's get... Ah, this is the green I'm looking for. So that's some of that, I think, Kislev flesh. It's mixed with our green. And now we're going to go down into here. Yeah, going down, and down into the recesses of this here. But let's not make that all about just the green. We're actually going to take some of our red here now. 
And some might even, I guess, call that a pink. So what is it here now? It's, oh, geez, it's 4 in the morning. I thought it was still only 3.30ish or so. So I guess it's later than I thought. Well, or earlier, whichever way you want to look at it. Let's see if I can sneak in. There's not the, a lot of great angles to sneak that brush into there. Now it would seem that, and I was suspecting this, that you've almost got kind of that leather armor type stuff going on here with the legs. So let's see if we can throw in a few little hints of that here. It's got kind of that reddish look to it. I'm sure on the, well, I'm going to maybe grab the Thayid in here and, and see what we've got. Because that's the electronic sculpted one. Yeah. Hey, yeah, the scale's a little bit easier to see on that. And you can see much more of this little, oh yeah, you can see a lot more on a digitally sculpted one. Just going to take me a drink of something here. Ah, sorry about that. Now, I'm going to get a touch of, if I can, yeah, here. Oh, even, that's some of that original sort of screaming, yeah, screaming skull, I think that is. I'm still sitting there. Find just a couple of highlights there. Now the hair also, that got a little bit darker, so we're going to lighten that up. Really just beard. The only thing that, that shows up on his face is pretty much just facial hair. All right, horn. What I might do, and this this is just basically contrast red here. Let's see if we can't do just a couple of these. So it's going to be almost like, kind of like a dragon's teeth type of thing. So we're trying to take this part of the pattern here. You see what we've got going on that. Just to give some little more action to this line here. Not much, just a little. I mean, it's, it's pretty darn simple. It's almost in the shape of Christmas lights. And I'll just do one more here. Not going crazy. And I've got this little extra thing I put out over here. So let's extend that some more. It's rough because the well, the area I'm trying to paint it over is really rough. It is really, <laughs> it is not the smoothest sculpted area in the world, that's for sure. Or cast, one or the other. And then I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna clean up that line, and now fill these in. See, it's a quick way to make it look like you've drawn that entire thing when really it didn't. You, it's a sort of a, in a way, similar to what I do with the eyes. Now, there, that needed to be lighter. Where else? Where else? Here. I'm going to see if I can't get a little lighter with my green right here. Again, I'm going to sneak in some of that green. 
where I can elsewhere. Maybe even here on what's supposed to be gold. And now I'm gonna mix up another this is kind of a dark is it look at that, it doesn't even look necessarily like green. But when I put it in here, it's just going to register as green to your eyes. But see how it changes that color a little bit. And that was originally, that was the, what, the Warp Lightning green and the Leviathan blue. Keep going with this mix here. Maybe get some cleanup on those. And I, I'm going to go with some more lighter highlights. We're back to the scale mail here, and we're just going to hit a few of these edges. Trying to stay away from that, in theory, the shadow area of his shield. Might throw, and yeah, these definitely got to do something with these guys. Because they'd be catching some sort of light somewhere. That's going to just be too light. So again, this is me just taking some of that opaque lighter color paint mixing it with things like the leviathan blue and you get a semi translucent paint and for those that are real familiar with all of the the patreon videos and stuff you see me using the, the reaper clears and liners that's effectively what i'm doing here it's just mixing opaque paints with something that's more translucent like those contrast paints. Yeah, I needed to find some of those edges that was just looking quite shapeless there. This is a weird sculpting situation over here for sure. And the way this goes. And I will try and find on a few of these a highlight along the edge. It is not the easiest thing in the universe, that's for sure. Okay, we're going to go back into some darker stuff here. We got Leviathan Blue, we got the Wildwood. And I gotta get some definition here on the horn. That's a little better. Even on these straps here. And I'm actually, I gotta get me some darker greens here, so I will take my mix there, mix it with that green and get it nice and dark. Oh, Bethany. Hello and Happy New Year. Oh, Gary. Oh, yeah, we. He already sent me that greeting, but I know it's got to be extra close for you there, Bethany, down in the place where it is super, super warm right now. Like insanely warm and on fire. But I hope not by you yeah I was I was thinking of doing this tomorrow well today later today but then I realized I may not even well I'd be back by now but I would probably be way too exhausted to be doing this so I thought I'd do this one now and then what would be on the morning of the second or something like that then then pop another one of these in. 
I just wanted to kind of chill out a little bit here and get going on my Rohan because that little flag, the Rohan flag that's in that lower right-hand corner, that actually arrived earlier today. I actually have a five foot by three foot Rohan flag, and that's that's pretty nifty. Now they don't really make an Easterling flag, which bums me out. I'm sure. Well, I don't even know if you could find an Isengard flag. There is a Minas Tirith flag, though, or well, Gondor flag. Just don't mind me while I sneak a little bit of lighter color under there. You can see, look, I'm just taking different just junk colors from my palette. Some green, some red. And as you can see, it's kind of on the transparent side. So it, some of the darker tones that are already there, it just plays off of those. Speaking of playing off stuff, just like we did over here, where we had to reflect that lighter color onto this. Well, let's sneak this around. Oh, boy, that's going to be not easy. But try and get a few lighter bits of scale mail that reflect that white because you can't have and I've seen this a bunch I've seen basically black cloaks next to armor or white cloaks and it's just not reflected at all I mean not even the tiniest hint or fire or something and it's just right next to a metal surface and somehow magically none of it is reflected don't quite know how that happened. See if I can't work some more lighter color into this. Yes, I can. And here I'll flip this around. Just need to get a few more brush strokes in there. So this is that pattern that we threw in. Ah, I need to fade this out a little bit. There we go. And I see I need to clean this up slightly here and get it a little lighter. There we go. Now that's got some turn to it. We have plenty of nifty little design things going on. Maybe. Cause I'm looking at this is again the last Lord of the Rings session we did. See there's a little, we have some hints of the lines there. So let's just do that here real quick. Let's see if we can reinforce. And this is just the contrast paint here. That's basically all I'm using at this point. It's not contrast paint. doesn't have to just be that crazy slop it on type stuff. It actually can be. This is the same stuff I would do with the Reaper Clear and Liner paints. Why? Because they they work well like this. They give you a, a decent line, but yet they cover because that's what the contrast paints are supposed to do. They're supposed to be thin. We're just not going to take them and slop them on there. Kind of saves you some money too, not slopping them on there. It's no wonder that GW wants you to use them that way because you go through those eight hour jars that much faster and I'm thinking you don't necessarily want to be going through those jars that fast here see I've got this is the fleshed here red all of this red stuff here that was all just the contrast paints There, we'll see if we can reinforce that pattern. I'm going to turn up my brightness ever so slightly there. And that all of this, all this freehand pattern right here was all just put in there with contrast paint the same way I would have taken if this was Reaper stuff, that would have taken clear red maybe a touch of red liner in there 
and just drawing this in because it would be nice and thin but yet the paint covers so you were able to put in a little extra boost over there too just want to make sure I can see that chat see we even did some freehand designs on there too And let's say that I need to shade that red slightly lighter. Well, now I can take, this is the same color I used to lighten that shield. Now, just in a few places. Because we shaded this freehand here, we're definitely going to want to shade the rest of it. And we we established that freehand pattern as early as we could. So let's compare him to our this is from the last Lord of the Rings session we did there to our Del Amroth with the nifty freehand on the, the cloak there. Let's see if I can't get yeah, I needed a touch more light there. We're going to get some on our metals here where we need it. And all of those different Lord of the Rings figures that I've showed you, what have I done? There's the Easterling series, the Morgul Knights with oils, Rohan, now Harad, so three series are already done. A fourth one is halfway through. About to start a fifth Lord of the Rings series and all that. It's all there on the Patreon page. You do that Army Painter Pledge thing. You're looking at all the Dark Sword episodes, all the basing episodes, and all those Army Painting episodes. about 260 hours of tutorials and it covers pretty much everything and there's I'm always trying out new paints the chimera colors there I guess they're on their way now again hopefully they actually do arrive this time I've got some larger scale things that I'm working on from big child creatives terrain projects also some 40k stuff too sisters of battle sisters of silence custodies and now a project to actually do a tutorial on every space marine chapter because there was a kind donation of some primaris marines so we're going to have to get those guys prepped. I need along this edge to trying to get me some light right in here. This is a tough little crest to paint there because there was a some mold line going there and it was really tough to file that down without completely filing away what was supposed to be there. Now to do the sky blue color we just mixed, and it was Calthan blue. I'm going to actually throw, well, I don't, I have white over here. I try and get right here on this helmet. That's it. That's what I needed few hints of this lighter sky blue we also needed here on his hand we needed here on the sword blade actually I'm gonna go with a touch of gold reflection over there cuz you know why not 
back into our blue mix again. I think we'll, we'll just leave that particular freehand alone there. Now the foliage stuff that I was going to use was it's basically this right here. If you ever paint an iridescent effect such as raven feathers actually yeah well when you look at actually some of that metallic stuff that I did that kind of helped or that kind of did some of that so I'm going to see if I can throw some of these right onto here we've got just simple super glue here and this is from Warlord and I know I've done it on Let's see, some, some other sci-fi figs too. All right, let's just, now see, does that cover up too much of him? I don't think so because I don't necessarily like what was sculpted there. So this is one way of getting around that. I'm just going to throw these guys right here. Let's see if I can find myself one of my little pins. And we're just going to shove this down here. And what we're trying to do is match our... Again, this is from the Army Painting Series, so I'm trying to basically kind of tack on here. The rest of the Army now here. Yeah, that's just... That's going to call for something else. We're going to do some of our little green flock there but for now for right now we're just gonna keep going with what we have do I'm just checking to see if I've got enough yeah then I go with some more lights up here on the headdress part Maybe even a few extra little highlights on the hair. Man, uh, if it's already New Year's for people, I wish you a happy New Year. And thanks for, well, spending a part of it with me. That's, that's very generous of you. Get some darker. There we go. Just sort of level that out. Now here, I've got no definition there. And hopefully this does. Yeah, hopefully that does it. Ever so slight highlight there. I'm going to try and get a few little bright points of light because that's nothing says metal like a few bright points of light and also some reflections like right there. I'm trying to think of other things that had the iridescent effect. Uh, oh, I did. Oh. Uh, the, the pearl white, that actually, it was for something, this crazy weir shark. It was, it was a walking shark, basically, and I tried that, and I've used that a couple of times. It's not like using the metal medium. It's not as, it doesn't influence the color quite so much as the metal medium does. But it does give it, when you turn it and, and such, it does give it a little bit of an iridescent effect. Uh, I was thinking there was some Reaper. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of... Well, heck, there's the GW Sea Elf army or whatever. I could try doing it on those guys, too. Uh, I'm just trying to get myself some lighter colors there.
these leather straps those need to have a little more impact and I guess I have to figure out well, how much shadow is there on his hand so let's not do with any more on that and now we've got to get the make sure this horn has all of its shading where it needs it yeah we need to get some lighter right here up on the top of this I'm gonna get actually a little bit of this basically a flesh tone color here too color goes somewhere it must go everywhere now I have to on the side of this shield again and this is some of my ground color here that's some of the wild wood Or it's right there. It almost kind of gives me a bit of a horizon line on that. And I'm also going to work some darks into the this little plume here, which I'm still convinced is actually a horse tail. Well, let's see. There's still a part of me that wants to shade down a touch of this, yeah. See, that boy, as much as I want to keep that there, I've. Reality says no, you've got to knock that down a little bit. So we'll do that. We'll sort of reorganize our. I think, yeah, that's, I need to make that a little less wide there. These are the adjustments that I can do now that the freehand is well established. Remember when we just threw this on there, it almost looked kind of pell-mell. So we just chucked it on there like that. And then we made a fair amount of adjustments to it. Now, if we wanted this cloak to have almost sort of a texture look to it, well, all we have to do is just kind of do some stippling here. Not quite sure if that's what I actually want to do, but... And I can do the, the mud spatter on there, too. I don't think I'm going to actually be doing that. I may to to match what I did on on the rest of the army. There, I needed some mid tone there. It was all just everything was dark, dark, dark. Had to lighten it up there. Also changed the color a bit. And what did we use? We used a few contrast paints here. And just a few regular GW paints to lighten them up and make them more opaque. It doesn't have to be, you don't need a million colors. You don't need a million brushes. We used basically two brushes. That's it. Nothing terribly fancy. But he certainly looks, he's got a lot of stuff going on. We got their, our fun freehand over here. Did a little freehand on that. We did some non-metallic metal type things. We got a lot of stuff that we did on here. We've even tossed some of our flower stuff on there. Oh, I'm going to try and get a little green out of the armor here, that which is, I know, to some people, they can see all the red that's there already. They're saying, what in the world are you putting that green there for? That doesn't go next to red. Well, actually, it does because your eye doesn't even know it's there. Sort of until it's too late, I guess. And 
I did have some of the contrast medium out too. We've, we've been using that to thin things down. So yeah, that's a little better. And you can tell that that is, it's warmer, whereas our highlights are a bit cooler. So we're using more of the straight up warp lightning green. We mix a little bit of the white with it. And now that's a cooler highlight color, but with warmer shadows. That's sort of how the whole light thing works. Is if you've got a highlight, it's probably and it's cooler. It's probably because it's daylight, which means your shadow color is probably going to be warmer, because you're looking at dirt, grass, concrete, whatever. I'm gonna take some of that green, mix it with my with that red and some of my contrast stuff here. I gotta get the sleeve here. Uh, it could be armor and not just leather, well, or leather armor. You know, if we wanted to maybe Do a little bit of mud spatter here. Let's let's try. So I'm gonna just paint some on. So I'm gonna take my finger here. We'll smear that around. It's just an impression of it. Doesn't have to overpower it. I could do this with a with a sponge or something. I guess the the thing to note is that the drier the mud the more you're going to have a it's going to be lighter here let's get a little bit of the contrast paint in there to tone that down so now we've get we're just kind of putting in some of our little spatters here yeah, we can throw a little bit onto here And for those of you that are new just watching this, I appreciate you coming in here. I try and do a couple of these a week if possible. Sometimes I can't quite do that many. We're at conventions or there's just something going on. But if you do the subscribe thing and, and click on the all notifications, then you're more likely to get Get sort of a, I don't want to say advanced notice. I, I wish I could do these on a regular schedule, but since I'm filming so many videos for the Patreon page, if I need to, just like the other night, I was uploading a three hour video or something like that. That pretty much took up the whole night, so there was no way I could do one of these because uploading a three hour video. Well, as you can imagine, that takes just a wee bit of bandwidth. I get me some lighter, yeah, the horse's head here. Get those manes a little lighter. I don't know if those are words. I can't really tell from the reference that those are supposed to be. Now, silver or gold, or just regular old metal. Can't quite tell. I am going to see if I can't. Yeah, that's just a wild wood, essentially, that I'm just using as brown liner right here. Yeah, I needed that separation. That's helpful. And it's not an outline, then that's what's cool is that it, it is still semi-translucent, so you don't, it's not going to be this opaque line. You're not just taking black. It's not that, uh, I hate the term black lining. I just wish nobody would use that term. But people do. That is not a line. It actually has some color to it. Now 
Okay, what I will do here real quick, I'm going to get this brush out of harm's way, and we're going to grab some of the sand and gravel glue. We are just going to toss that into a little container here. If we can get that open, and I want to get some. Here, just throw this out here. Don't need much. And I've got a little bit of a flock mixture here. So this is the same flock that I used right here on my captain. I'm going to grab a brush here, preferably something. One of my craft brushes that has seen better days. And now you'll find out why we didn't go too crazy painting these rocks. Now I am going to throw a little something here over my palette just to protect that, like this. And we're going to sprinkle some of our flock in here. See, so now all of a sudden that rock that I didn't bother paint, well, now it actually has some nice striations, and we've got, oh, some nice green working in there. <laughs> Blow away some of the extra. I'm going to do the same thing here. This is another way of, kind of helps make the flowers sort of mesh with the rock here, too. I'm going to cover this. Scatter some right into there. Now, if I'm doing this myself, I'm just gonna leave that sit there instead of blowing it away like I just did. But I wanted you to be able to see that, so don't mind me and the sound of me blowing things into the camera, I guess. So there's my shield. I really didn't want to get a bunch of flock into my into my paint there. That wouldn't be so good. But that was from MIG Ammo. That sand and gravel glue. Oh, it's fantastic for gluing the leaves down. If you've ever seen me use the Green Stuff World leaf cutters, I absolutely love those. We've got plenty of Dark Sword tutorials coming up in 2020. I got one with the family of owl bears that's coming up. We did the basing tutorial that was for the Patreon page, and now I've got a whole family of owl bears to paint. We've got another Lord of the Rings. It's actually a Mithril miniatures figure, and that one's gonna. That's going to have a waterfall on it because it's actually Galadriel on horseback of all things. Now here, we've been working things lighter and lighter. Now I've got to get some some darks in here, especially where we've got some kind of a recess here. I'm going to try and just do a quick little, well here, let's use the contrast medium. We've got it for a reason. This is taking the wild wood and such, and we're just trying to, there we go, trying to use it more as just a regular glaze as opposed to the so-called contrast type paints. So see, we got some dark there. It's basically to indicate a little bit of a shadow there. I'm going to do the same with the hair over there, maybe even here. My freehand pattern. Yeah, let's tone that down in a couple of spots. Just trying to follow these big old folds here. And now 
I need to get some shading here because again, this is all in shadow because it's it, the light's being blocked by that big old shield there that he's got. His big old red shield. Let's see. This is again just flesh tier red, mixing it with that Baylor brown to lighten this up here. Yeah. I'm going to do one over here and then one on the top of the shield. I need that. Yeah. That basically it makes my the same thing there. That works. Let's get some more white on the manes of the horse designs here. On our shield. So I've got a bunch of red shields to paint. That's for sure the rest of his buddies. Now I've got kind of an interesting sort of lemon yellow that's developed there because the green has gotten more and more into my yellow mix there. All right. I just want to thank everybody that's hung out with me on this, this New Year's Eve. I, it's going to be a little too hard for me to go through and find everybody's name, but I appreciate the lessons in Mandarin and such. That was really cool. So hopefully I'll have even more languages to greet people with. i just got to clean that up there. Now if you want to see pictures of these things, what they look like when they're done, see I got the Instagram thing right there at Wapelius. You, you can check them out there because I'll, as soon as I can tomorrow, well, tomorrow's already today, I'll try and get pictures of Urkin Brand here up on the Instagram page for you guys to see. Now, like I said, if you can, well, drop a like on this or do the subscribe thing. That's much appreciated too. It helps build the channel and it lets me just do that much more and have more fun times like this. So, again, thanks again, folks. This is, we have Urkin Brand here and he's part of my, the new direction for my Lord of the Rings Rohan army. We did plenty of freehand here on our shield and on his robe. So, thanks again, folks, and Happy New Year.